He had heard about this man so many years. He heard about the miracles he did. He heard about his preaching. He heard all of these things. Listen, and now is this great moment. He was delighted. He was absolutely thrilled to, to meet Christ because he was desirous. And he asked him any question. What did Jesus say to him? Nothing. Now here's my question. Why did Jesus Christ, the Son of God, not answer the questions of Herod? Why did he say absolutely nothing to Herod? The answer is very simple. Herod had sinned away his day of grace. There was nothing for Christ to say. For Herod was headed. For judgment. Let me tell you, you see, after that scene, read your history books and you'll find. You see, after that scene, in a matter of weeks, listen to me carefully, in a matter of weeks, Herod fell from his throne and died. He went to hell. Why? Because he sent away his day of grace. Why did he do it? He did it because of the applauds of men. He lost his soul because he wanted the favor of the crowd. He wanted to please the crowd. He couldn't belittle himself in front of the crowd. And so to make himself the great fellow, he was willing to silence the man of God. He put the servant of God to death. The man who was simply faithful to his soul. And there's many a person in my years of ministry, friend, and I must be honest before God. They no longer come to God's house because they don't want to hear what God's got to say. They don't want to turn from their sin. They don't want to repent of their sin. They don't want to confess their sin. And they sin away their day. Of grace. I remember just to the close, I remember holding a mission up in Castle Gray. And I remember in that mission, just before we held that mission, the Lord came down and met with us in a very mighty way. And but before that mission was started, some of the young members of that congregation were going out to put up the posters. I was a <coughs> member of Parliament for Castle Derg at that time, had just been elected. And some of the young people there were putting up the posters and they asked one of their unsafe companions and friends to come with them. And this young fellow, he said, well, he says, you know, I, I, I'm very fond of Willie McRae. He's my member of parliament. And he said, for him, I'll put up the poster. But he said, I want to tell you something. I won't be in the mission. Don't ask me. I won't be in the mission. Some of the other young lads said, no, don't, don't say that. He said, now listen, listen, I'll put up the posters. And he says, I won't be in the mission. I was starting on a Sunday afternoon to commence that mission then. On the Saturday night, a group of young lads went out to the pleasure houses of the world. And among them was that young lad. It was about two o'clock in the morning. They were coming home. They lost control of the car. Came into Castle Derg. The car hit the bridge. And the young lad was killed. In the afternoon, I started the mission. But remember his word. I'll not be in the mission. And he wasn't. He was in eternity. Don't play with God, friend. 
You see, Herod, whenever he heard of Christ the first time, he was he was so convicted. And then his heart had started to get hard. And, and my, he steeled himself. And he even was uh, on the verge. He was wanting to kill Christ. And then he had the opportunity to face Christ. But Christ had nothing to say. Why? Because he sent away his day of grace and opportunity. And shortly after that, he dropped of a throne. And went to hell. Tell me, where was the crowd there? Where was the crowd there? Eternity. Eternity, where will you be? In eternity. Friend, I beg you in God's name, run to Jesus tonight, for thank God He'll save you and thank God He'll forgive your sin. And thank God he'll give you peace with him if you'll only come. For Jesus' sake, let's pray. Heavenly Father, bless your word in the closing moments of this meeting. And we pray that as we give a simple invitation, oh, the precious souls will run to Christ. Oh, they will find in him their pardon, their peace, and redemption through the precious blood. Let one, let not one in this gathering, die in their sin. But, oh God, bring them to Jesus. As our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Then is God speaking to you? Do you remember the first time that Herod heard he was troubled? Let me ask you, are you troubled tonight? Are you troubled about your sin? Are you troubled about the path you're on? Are you troubled what you're doing? Are you steeling your heart against the Lord? Or will you bow before him and say, Lord, I confess my sin. He didn't come to take your life then. He came to give you life. And give it more abundance. We sing the little verse, just as I am, without one plea, if there's one tonight. And you say, Preacher, I confess I need Jesus tonight. <coughs> I need God's salvation. Lead me to the Savior. Maybe there's someone you've wandered away, and be honest before God, you need to get back into fellowship, friend. You need to get back to the place of fellowship. Where is the blessedness I knew when first I saw the Lord? I wonder as we sing this little verse, would you indicate that desire and say, Preacher, before God tonight, I mean business with God. I want God to speak to me. I want God to deal with me in mercy. I don't want to cross over the line. O Lamb of God, I come just as I am. Raise that hand above your head as we sing the verse. Indicate the desire. Don't leave without Jesus, just as I am. Just as I am without one plea. There's a one tonight in our gathering. Would you lift that hand right now? Indicate that desire. Let the Lord deal with your heart, friend. 